Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about digital photography printing and how many megapixels you really need to make a large print. Stay tuned. Welcome back everyone, my name is Eric Marks with FindingMiddleEarth.com and today we're going to talk about digital photography printing. So um, it's about one o'clock in the morning here uh, where I live and I was just doing some post-processing uh, in my office here and I suddenly got inspired to do this video because I was going over some images that I took recently and I came across one of them that really stood out and every once in a while uh, I'll want to print one of my images just for me. Uh, not to sell, not to give away, just to hang in my office because it inspires me. Something about the location uh, or maybe a memory, uh, you know, while I was there shooting. Something about it just kind of, you know, just clicks and I want a print of it. And so that just happened and I was in Photoshop resizing it for print uh, and I just it just kind of dawned upon me. There's a lot of misconception out there and a lot of theories on how big you can actually print with certain megapixels and certain cameras. So if you've come to this video to look for these spreadsheets on the width and length dimensions of the sensor based on prints, there's a million other videos out there just like that. Uh, and some of them are really great and you can go watch those. But I'm here to show you uh, physical prints that I have actually made uh, from certain cameras and we're just gonna talk about if they look good or not. So um, you'll have to excuse me, uh, the, like I said in the last video, uh, the pollen is just kind of killing my allergies a little bit outside, so I have some hot tea here that I'll be drinking periodically, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and drink now, actually. Uh, it's a nice, uh, nice peach tea. I always, every time I do post-processing, I have a nice cup of hot tea with me. It's just, uh, I'm not from the UK, so that this may be interesting for uh, Americans. I know every time I watch these uh, British people's YouTube channels, they're always like, oh, let's start today off with a cup of tea, and we're going to talk about Nikon cameras. Uh, but uh, I just love hot tea. So I always normally have some hot tea and some... Uh, uh, Zen Garden Radio on Pandora playing while I'm doing some post-processing to just kind of get me in that chilled out mood. Um, and so anyway, uh, I'll be helping myself to that throughout the video. Uh, but I have prepared some prints here. Um, I've just made them periodically over the last few months um, as kind of test prints really because a couple of clients have asked for these specifically. And so anytime a client asks for a print, I always send them to my print gallery uh, but I, before I upload them, I normally do a test print at home on my Canon Pro 1 printer. Um, and the reason I do that is because just in case I missed a little dust spot or something tiny that I didn't see in the image before, it's great to do a test print yourself so that you can see it kind of scaled larger in, you know, in person and just kind of prove it. Because if you have a customer spending you know, $2,500 on a 40 by 60 print, and they're printing it on metal, you know, you don't want to have to, you know, give them a refund and say, oh, let me just, you know, clone that out real quick in Photoshop and, you know, reship you a print. That's going to be a big loss. So test, doing some tests and some proofs uh, is always a good idea. Um, okay, so I shoot with a 36 megapixel Nikon D810, um, and I've shot with tons of Nikon DSLRs uh, over the years. I've been with Nikon since day one, and then throughout the years I've added some more stuff to my kit to just kind of play around with stuff. Uh, I played around with a Canon 5D Mark III for a year, played around with a Sony A7R, so I've done a few other things, but I've always had my Nikon gear and I've never uh, given that up. So um, the first print I'm gonna show you came from a 12 megapixel Nikon D3, okay? And so it's 2016 currently, and in my opinion, those cameras still sell like hotcakes. They're used, obviously they don't sell them new anymore. Uh, when they released, they were probably five or $6,000, just like the Nikon D5 is now. Um, and it's 12 megapixels. It was, it was great in low light. It's still great in low light by today's standards. The Nikon D3 is 12 megapixels full frame, but it's a great camera still. Uh, I don't own one anymore, but I, you know, I, I would love to get my hands on one again because it was just a great camera. So. Um, this print here is a 13 by 19 and it was printed from a 12 megapixel Nikon D3, okay? And I don't know about you, but I think this print looks unbelievable. I'm going to hold it up a little closer 
to the camera just so you can kind of inspect it a little better. And I mean, the colors are vibrant, it's sharp, there's tons of detail there. Um, and so all I did was just kind of uh, resize this in Photoshop to the exact dimensions. And I changed the um, pixel density uh, to 300 uh, DPI, okay? And I do that because most uh, professional print labs require 300 DPI and Adobe RGB color scale. Those are all technical terms that just don't worry about them, but that's basically, uh, you always wanna resize your digital photo to the file size that you're trying to print. And you don't wanna go too crazy. I'm not sitting here saying that a you know a 12 megapixel D3100 can print billboard size. I'm just saying uh, there's a lot of misconception today that people think that uh, 12 megapixels just isn't enough anymore. And it kind of drives me crazy sometimes because um, it, there's so many people out there that comment on, uh, I'm gonna set this down for a second, they comment on YouTube videos and uh, DP review forums and all this other stuff that just rip these people apart that want 12 megapixel cameras in uh, 2016 and they say, oh, well, you'll, you know, if you wanna print uh, 16 by 20 and 24 by 36, 20 by 30, you know, you're crazy. You'll never do that with a 20 by 30. And what's so funny is the uh, Nikon D3, D3S, they came out around, you know, 2008 and 2009 or 10 or whatever. Um, and it's like people think that in 2008, no one was printing 20 by 30. They're acting like 20 by 30 didn't exist then. Uh, a 20 by 30 print is a 20 by 30 print, whether it's printed in 2008 or whether it's printed in 2016. And so people were making 20 by 30 prints with 12 megapixel cameras back when the D3 came out. Uh, that was a D3 print, is a 13 by 19, uh, but I have also had this printed uh, on 20 by 30, okay? Now, I also um, have a uh, Nikon D3100 up here that is actually my mom's camera. I had her lend it to me for a video series that I was teaching because most people have these entry-level Nikons. And so I wanted to kind of teach the workshop based on those, the mode dial that it has because my D810 doesn't have the traditional mode dial. So I have this, I'm borrowing this from my mom and I, I said, you know, are you okay if I just shoot a couple of photos of this? Because I just want to see what this, you know, entry-level, now you can get these used for like $200, what this little entry-level DSLR will do, okay? so. Um, I took this entry-level DSLR and I made uh, another print with it that was a 13 by 19 just like this. And I actually ended up, believe it or not, I ended up selling that one. Uh, so I don't have it with me, but it also looked great on 13 by 19. However, I will say that I have tried, a, I ordered a 16 by 20 on the D3100 and it looked horrible. Um, and I resized it and I did everything, but it just... It, it didn't look good until you were standing a certain distance away. So there is another, a whole nother... Um, you know, thing that comes into play with prints where uh, people will say, well, you know, you can't just say, how big can I print with this megapixel count? Uh, because it all depends on how close your viewers are gonna be to the print, uh, right? Because these billboards that you see uh, when you're driving down the highway, if you saw them at, you know, two feet away, they're gonna look like the most pixelated pieces of garbage print you've ever seen. But because you're viewing them from the highway and they're way up there in the sky, they're gonna look crystal clear. So it, it all depends on you know, how far your viewers. I'm speaking strictly on if you wanted to get a print and give it to a family member or keep it for yourself to hang on a wall in your office or in your house. That's what I'm speaking about today. So this 13 by 19 from the 12 megapixel D3 looks flawless. Uh, I have another one from the Nikon D3, 12 megapixel, okay, that I um, printed on a 20 by 30. So let's take a look at that, okay? This is a 20 by 30 of the Great Smoky Mountains. And it's kind of rolled up. This was, another, again, this was just a test print for me because I had a client order a really large one of these um, and I wanted to get a pretty large one myself to do a test. So this here, can't really straighten it all out for you, but this was uh, is a 20 by 30 on the D3 as well. So same camera as that other sunset print that you just saw. Let me show you kind of the, the detail in the sky. I'll show you kind of the side. Um, let me see if I can unfold this side for you so you can kind of see, I'll turn it vertical, just so you can see the detail in the grass and the mountains. And so this is a 12 megapixel camera again, it's full frame, okay? So you're still getting this great image quality. And uh, it's just unbelievable that there's so many people that still think that, you know, with a 12 megapixel camera, oh, forget it, if you, you know, you can do an eight by 10 or a nice wallet size, 
Um, but anyway, so these these cameras can still do these wonderful size prints. You just have to know proper technique. Obviously, it has to be a tack sharp image uh, straight out of the camera. Okay, it has to be um, resized right in Photoshop. It has to be the right pixel density. Uh, you want the colors to look right. So you know a lot of it is is good technique. Uh, in camera and post processing wise, but if you just have the good technique down which by the way I'll do another video on that in the future uh, how I prep my files for printing But if you have good technique you can get these great 20 by 30 prints out of an Icon D3 um, I've seen people online uh, Get 40 by 60s out of the D3s um, And again, that's 12 megapixels. It is a little bit of a sensor upgrade from the D3 So I've never actually printed that large with the D3 before Excuse me and um, it, it just, they look unbelievable. So I have one more print that I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna take a sip of my tea while I'm getting it. And this, uh, if you're a Harry Potter fan, I took this while I was in Universal Studios in Orlando, and this is of Borgen and Burks. So I don't know if you can see that too well. That plastic is reflecting off of my light here. Let me get out of the plastic since it's kind of a matte finish. Okay, so this is Borgen and Burke, uh, and that is the, it's, it was an HDR that I did, and that's the print, uh, 13 by 19, and this one is not from a D3, this is from a D300, okay? So this is the cropped sensor um, Nikon that's 12 megapixels, and this is a 13 by 19. So now let's talk about this. So I also tried this, which was on a D300, um, I tried this on 20 by 30, okay, and it did not look very well at all unless I was standing maybe six feet away, okay? But this right here, I can look at it like right in my face and it looks tack sharp and beautiful, uh, but the 20 by 30, it needed to be a few feet away from me to kind of look good. Um, so this is where the question comes into play. Why, Eric, did you print a 20 by 30 of this image of the mountains down here um, and on the 12 megapixel Nikon D3, and it looks wonderful, but the 12 megapixel of the Nikon D300, which is the crop sensor, 12 megapixels, doesn't look so good. Um, full frame and crop sensor cameras print differently, okay? There is an image quality difference. So these people that say it's all about the megapixels, uh, I'm sorry to inform you, they are wrong. Uh, now, you know, everyone can say that it's an opinion, which it is, there's it, it all opinions, but the size of the sensor ultimately depicts the image quality in the final image, how big you can size the image. Because if you're talking about crop sensor versus full frame when you're sharing photos online, they're all gonna look fine because Facebook compresses the heck out of all the images anyway. Um, and so it's, you know, it's, it's all about the same online. But when you're talking about printing, the full frame sensor gives you the most image quality uh, so that by the time you enlarge these, on physical paper and make them a physical piece of art, the full frame sensor is what gives you that extra image quality. As you can see, that's why I wanted to do this. So I have this 13 by 19 on the D300, which looks good. And then I made a 20 by 30 of this on the D300, the crop sensor 12 megapixel, doesn't look very good. Again, unless I'm maybe six feet away. Whereas the full frame Nikon D3 on a 20 by 30 of this guy looked unbelievable in my opinion. It, it looks so sharp and the detail is great. Um, and like I said, the client of mine that ordered this, and I wish I could have seen it, he said he was very happy with it, he ordered a 40 by 60, okay, um, from a 12 megapixel Nikon D3. Again, I, I made sure that any, any image that I offer a print that large on, I make sure that they're tack sharp. I make sure that, uh, you know, everything is right so that there's no surprises when my, when my client gets the print and says, oh wow, this, is, this looks kind of blurry. This doesn't look how I thought it was gonna look. So make sure that you have good technique um, in camera and after the fact so that you can get these kind of print sizes. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to, to let everyone know uh, here at now 1.32 in the morning <laughs> that it is possible to get these larger format prints out of older 12 megapixel cameras. As long as they're full frame and as long as your technique is good and everything is sharp with the image. Um, so I'm gonna be doing some more of these videos on this printing thing because uh, since it kind of popped into my head, I started researching on YouTube just to see what else was out there. There's a lot of people that are just feeding people 
uh, BS, in my opinion, about this print thing. They're, it, it, literally, they think it's all about the megapixels. You know, if you have a, a crop sensor camera that's an 80 megapixel camera, but it only goes up to ISO, you know, 200, you can still print the size of a billboard. You know, it's like, you can also print the size of a billboard from an iPhone, but it would have to be, you know, viewed from like two football fields away. So it just, it all depends on these factors and it's not all about megapixels. So I've had a lot of people ask me this too. So this is why I wanted to make this because uh, if you have a 12 megapixel full frame camera and you're using the right technique, you can get these big prints for your office or give them to family members for Christmas or sell them or whatever you want to do. Uh, don't think that, you know, if you're trying to get your hands on uh, an old Nikon full frame DSLR so that you don't have to spend three or four grand on the newer ones, do it. That's a great way to go. The Nikon D3 is one of my favorite cameras of all time. It's amazing. Uh, I still regret so much to this day that I sold my D4. I'm actually currently trying to get my hands on another one. Uh, I'm hoping to purchase it tomorrow. Actually, uh, I'm talking to uh, an online camera store, had a refurbished one pop up. So I'm hoping to get that tomorrow, but I had a question. Uh, I was asking them about the shutter count actuations, um, but I, the D4 is 16 megapixels. And so, you know, the, again, these, these cameras with lower megapixels, they're wonderful. I, again, I shoot with a D810, 36 megapixels over here, and I'm sure that can do wonderful. I, the biggest I've printed with this is 40 by 60, uh, but I've never personally printed that ever. I've only done that for clients have ordered it from my Smug Mug print gallery. Um, and every single time that uh, someone purchased it, by the way, I always do a follow-up to say, hey, you know, wanted to make sure everything was okay. Did you get the print? Did everything look good? And every single time, oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. It's so crisp, the colors are vibrant. And that just makes me so happy because I know that I did my job right with in-camera, after the camera, all the way to physical delivery of the piece of art. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope uh, this random print information rant thing here at, in the middle of the night has helped everybody. And uh, I'm gonna finish my cup of tea and get back to work on processing my photos. So everyone take care and have a great week. Bye. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.